Android 21 lab coat was one of the most broken characters in fighting game history. Bro. Yo, what? That damage is insane. Sorry. What the? Yeah, that's wild. Oh my yes. god. Hey! <laughs> Oh my goodness, they reflect. <laughs> Her kit was completely unbalanced, but one ability in particular was so overpowered that it almost single handedly killed the game. There you go. That is so cheap. It reduces damage by 21%, which obviously the damage output in the game is already low enough. I don't know what Bandai was thinking. What? She grabbed him. Through. What the f is going on, dude? Through the DP and everything. From casual to the pro level, Labco 21 was an unavoidable terror who forced everyone to play her. I know everyone okay. in the chat is hyped when this normal match happens. <laughs> Labco versus Labco. Crowd goes mild. My chat does not like watching it, you know? It's not that fun to watch. And the one question on everyone's mind was why? Why would the devs release a character so obviously broken and then go completely silent? Were they really trying to ruin their own game? No, okay, it's gonna hit me. There's nothing I can do. Anyway, at this point, say, there's just nothing I can do about it. <laughs> I was gonna say, once you get hit, I mean, really, you don't get to. You I get really to dislike your fate that, that you can do it in a combo. Hey folks, before we get into the video, I wanna ask you to please sub to the channel and turn on notifications if you haven't done it yet. It really, really helps. And once you've done that, please head over to twitch.tv slash score esports and throw us a follow. We are going live all the time. We just did our Evo co-stream. You're watching this a month later, but I did it yesterday, which is why my voice is gone. We are going live with all kinds of amazing content like that all the time over on Twitch. You don't wanna miss us. So again, please follow us. Okay, so it's kind of impossible to explain just how busted Labcoat 21 was. When she came out in February, 2022, it really seemed like the Dragon Ball Fighters dev team set out to make the most broken character they possibly could. See, when most people think about a good fighting game, they're looking for cool characters, a great battle system, and lots and lots of post-launch content. But plenty of fighting games have great support and core design. If you don't have at least that, your game is gonna be a flop. These days, what actually makes your game stand out from the competition is good balance. And a lab coat 21 spat in the face of good balance. This character? Uh, you can do yes and no, because Bandai or whoever, Arxis, did not learn their lesson with balancing this game. They just gave a, another character, a medium starter EX Lariat that goes through everything, which means they don't see the problem, which means this meta is gonna suck for a lot longer. Every game has a shorthand of key tools you want a character to have if you want them to be strong. And when it comes to Dragon Ball Fighters, Lab Coat 21 had all of them. For example, quick low hitting attacks have been strong in fighters since day one. And Lab Coat had six of them. On top of that, she also had a beam, insane pressure, an OTG that was stupidly easy to combo into, a meterless four frame reversal, and an anti-air that could hit on all sides. Lab Coat 21 is a stupid, dumb, broken character. Right, I don't think anyone, I don't think anyone will remotely disagree with this. All of those crazy abilities put together made her the strongest character in the game by far. But incredibly, none of them were the actual problem. No, the real issue was her level one super, Photon Pulse. Photon Pulse was a command grab that did 2,121 damage. Get it, 2121? But more importantly, opponents hit with the grab received a 21% debuff to their damage, while Lab Coat 21 got a 21% buff to all of her specials damage. The fact that it's permanent is the big problem, right? Because if it was not permanent, or if like it went away when she tags out or something like that, I don't think it would even be an issue. And if you think that's overpowered, it gets worse. Unlike some other command grabs, Lab Coat 21's Photon Pulse didn't have a telegraphed startup animation, making it really hard to react to when used raw. But the thing is, she didn't have to use it raw, because unlike most command grabs, she could combo into it, making it an easy enough tool for even low-skilled players to abuse. Any touch led to a photon pulse, meaning any character lab code hit was effectively useless, and she could give the debuff to each character on the enemy team. Even if you know nothing about fighting games, it's not hard to grasp how broken this is. A 21% damage debuff to one side while the other side gets a 21% damage buff is incomprehensible. 
For context, Sparking, Fighter's main comeback mechanic, is a once per game temporary buff that gives your active character 21% bonus damage for 7 to 21 seconds. For one bar, Lab Code could completely nullify that with her 21% damage debuff, meaning Sparking just turned your character back into their normal self again. Just imagine how bad it was without Sparking. Lab Coat was so good that on the wiki, she was listed as having literally zero cons. So she's got a lot of unique tools, the debuff being one of them, buffing up herself, all for one bar. It's invincible, she can OTG you, she's got the best beam in the game, she can jail you from almost any situation, she's got insane specials, like just everything about the character, she can heal herself, like she's got just way too many powerful things. And of course, like with any top one super broken character, everyone had to pick up and learn her, which led to even more problems. Everybody playing Lab Coat made the game incredibly boring to watch. No one wanted to get touched in command grab, so neutral became extremely slow as players poked each other from a screen away. Remember, Lab Coat's pressure was also insane. So even if you blocked her, you had to pop sparking just to end the block string and reset right back to super slow neutral. On top of that, you were basically trolling if you didn't pick her. So at the pro level, it was all Lab Coat mirror matches. The matches could take extremely long because your opponent might have Lab Coat 21, you have Lab Coat 21, you're nerfing each other's damage and the matches just take forever and it's really boring to watch as well. But mirror matches between top one characters aren't exactly new for fighters. The game has struggled with balance issues since basically day one. Early on, DBFZ wasn't exactly broken, but a few characters were just categorically better than the rest. If you wanted to succeed, you needed characters like Cell, Kid Buu, or Android 16 on your team. Dolph got the man out. He's got solo Vegeta here, rocket kick. Big bang attack, punish. Uh-oh, five bars. Five bars on the side of the kid, Sonic Fox. Mistake from Goichi's gonna cost him so much life. The Ghost bring in that level three. And see, I'm like, damn. Potentially one mix up away, ladies and gentlemen, from taking this away. And he jump low! It. Sonic Fox, your combo breaker 2018 Dragon Ball Fighters champion! But in those early days, people were still experimenting to find out what worked and what the best teams could look like. Fighters was new and exciting, and to a certain degree, it felt like anything could happen with any team. Oh, what a challenge! And how did he block that? He dashed forward! Oh. Oh. Watch it. Oh, oh my God, God, the body is going to stop. Completely ah! another run of existence. We are breaking the dragon, rush it. This is crazy that Goichi is that poised right now. So is Leffen. They are so calm right now with only 30 seconds on the on the time. Wow! Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me? Oh my goodness. Yes, 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 yes. Hold up, hold up. Oh my God. Are you, how does he, oh that? Yeah, yeah. How how does he do that? Oh, he's still chasing. Yes. He's trying to jump out. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Was clutch. Oh my god. Yikes! But those days didn't last long. Once the LC characters started dropping, the meta quickly reshaped itself around the ones that were worth buying. When Bardock, the game's first DLC character, dropped in March, just a month after the game came out, he quickly took over the scene. And it didn't stop there. Over the next three years, Bandai Namco dropped 20 DLC characters. Some were arguably unplayable, but many totally warped the game. And things really came to a head with GT Goku. A lot of patience in the two. Oh, Sonic, okay, he's gonna okay, get okay. the pickup. Yeah, this is big for Fox. And we got also like full balls, able to get into a Genki Dama situation for the mix. Yeah, Spirit Bomb. One and two, Spirit Bomb. Thank yeah, the Minus, sending your energy. Sonic is one mix away from resetting the bracket. Where is Can he? Can Goichi block? Oh, and the mix up is... Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, we're in Madrid for the Dragon Ball Fighter Saga, and Sonic Fox just blessed us with a bracket reset. GT Goku had great damage, he was super fast, he had an amazing beam, he had good pressure, he had lots of lows, and I bet this is sounding pretty familiar at this point. He was so strong that at Red Bull Spain in 2019, 13 players in the top 16 were running him. The winner of almost every single major event in 2019 used GT Goku. The character was clearly a problem, and while he was finally nerfed in early 2020, he got replaced on many top players' teams with yet another broken fighter, Ultra Instinct Goku. Can he defeat UI Goku? Oh, no, bro. <laughs> Listen, bro. you're out GT out there in long have we waited. UI Goku. Here active defense, active and defense. Press the button, win. we're not season two no more, this is season three, baby. Okay. Oh! 
And here we go. Kazunoko keeps it alive, like we said. It kind of felt like Bandai Namco wanted to sell people busted characters, break the game, nerf them, and then repeat it all over again. So as DBFC grew, the DLC cast was getting as big as the launch roster. And every season, there was at least one character who threatened to upend the game's balance. The fighters community adapted every time though. And you could argue that if the developer's goal was to constantly shake up the meta and keep the game interesting, powerful characters like GT Goku, Gogeta Blue, UI Goku, and Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta were hugely successful. But Lab Coat 21 was different. The meta can't adapt to something that broken. And to make matters worse, it seemed like Labcoat wasn't just the last character the game would ever see, but also the last update entirely. No more balance patches. Just overpowered Labcoat forever. Oh, wait. Whoa! Caught him. Oh wait, this is huge. Whoa! Nice. Look, Whoa! At this. Look at the your limit to break. Oh my goodness! Bro. Yo, what? That damage is insane. Sorry. What the? Yeah, that's wild. Oh my goodness. god! Eddie! <laughs> oh my goodness, they reflect. <laughs> so, for a time, Lab Coat ruined the game. Because, like I already said, if you weren't picking her, you were basically throwing money away. It was so bad that at Combo Breaker 2022, there were 33 Lab Coats in Top 48. And what's messed up is that character diversity outside of Lab Coat was actually some of the best it had ever been. But the fact that almost every team featured her killed the hype. Yeah. Look at this mirror match, guys. I'm not feeling it personally. Everyone, everyone's favorite. Everyone's oh, favorite. I know okay. everyone in the chat is hype when this mirror match happens. <laughs> lab coat versus lab coat. Crowd Other goes mild. For months, fans cried for a nerf, but there was no response. And nobody knew what was going on. Did the devs just not care about the game anymore? Was it some sort of weird conspiracy theory to kill the game now and get people hyped for a sequel? Were they just trying to squeeze more money out of a four-year-old title? I feel like it was probably a bit rushed. Like, I just feel like they didn't consider how much it could affect tournaments and the players and the viewers. Eventually, tournament organizers took matters into their own hands. After months of banned discussions in the community, Labcoat was banned at CEO 2022. And that wasn't even the first time she got banned. Other TOs and even pros were stepping up to try to fix the game by getting rid of her. What's going on? Bum here to let you guys know that Lab Code 21 will be banned tonight for City of Mayhem 93 DBFZ on the PS4. Uh, reason being is because the super is very toxic for the game. It reduces damage by 21%, which obviously the damage output in the game is already low enough. I don't know what Bandai was thinking. So, you know, since Bandai's not going to do anything about it, I'm going to do something about it. With Lab Coat out of the picture at some events, the meta evolved. Obviously, many teams still consisted of these other top tier picks, but at least we got to see what tournaments looked like without her. And then, finally, after months of outcry, the devs nerfed Lab Coat 21. And she didn't just get nerfed, she got gutted. Less damage, worse combos, slower attacks, and of course, she lost the ability to combo into Photon Pulse, the command grab that broke the game. Lab Coat. Debuff isn't really a thing because you can pretty much only do it if you're trying to do it as a reversal or if you're doing it in a block string because it doesn't combo. You can't combo into it anymore. It now took real skill to land the command grab, which meant that there was a risk associated with trying to get the debuff. But here's the thing, even without Photon Pulse, Labcoat was still the best character in the game by a mile. And plenty of people thought the nerfs didn't even come close to changing that. Her toolset is still one of the best in the whole game. Like she still has uh, insane damage. She still has uh, crazy special moves. Um, yeah, she's still got really good block strings. She's got lots of lows in her strings so she can like pressure you easily. So yeah, I feel like she's still really strong. But there was some hope. Labcoat was nerfed just in time for the Dragon Ball Fighters World Championship, which had the potential to prove that the nerfs were enough and that a new meta could breathe fresh life into the game. But not everyone was excited. Sonic Fox dropped out of the World Championship, saying they felt disrespected that the devs would make such a huge change to the game just two weeks before a major event. After all, Labco didn't get nerfed in a vacuum. Her balance patch came with buffs and nerfs to the entire cast. It was basically a new game, and Sonic Fox didn't feel like they had enough time to properly prepare for the tournament. Plus, it's not like the game was in a good place to begin with. But miraculously, it seemed like the nerfs kind of worked. Labco was only on seven teams in the top 16 at the World Championship. Clearly, she was still insane, but nowhere near as powerful as before. 
Though that might have had more to do with the fact that she had changed so much and pros didn't want to risk picking her and messing up with a new version of the character. There were still two players running lab coat in top three. So it's not like the nerf kicked her out of top tier entirely. She just gets to hang out in S minus tier now. That being said, lab coat didn't win the tournament. Wawa heroically ended the lab coat meta by smashing every single scientist in his path to win the tournament. That is done for Nitro. Nitro is trying to get in. Still in loser. Oh, oh that could be it right there. Spark, that could be it. The bar, Wawa, Wait. just has to go for the simple combo. He's gonna build a ton of meter. He's got all That's his it. characters. He's going to go for Adol Gohan. He's got it. Level one into level he one. He's level one. Thank you, gentlemen. The you champion. are the fighters world championship champion of the world. BNS very own Wawa, without a doubt the best player on earth right now. But Wawa's win heralded the beginning of the fusion meta. Wawa went on to win EVO just after the world finals with Gogeta Blue and Vegito on his team. And it's not like lab coat went away completely. Top eight still featured four lab coats in EVO. Though again, character diversity is definitely a lot better without her on every team. So what does the future look like for fighters? Well, despite months of doom and gloom over lab coat 21 and a couple of resident sleepers in the chat for the fusion meta, Fighters is getting a new lease on life. Uh, we believe that Dragon Ball Fighters has been tuned to its finest, so we do not have future plans for any new characters or a balance um, adjustment. But here's the good news, as you have heard from her, we have decided to implement Robot Neko to Dragon Ball Fighters. Thank you. <laughs> Bandai Namco's rollback announcement at EVO ensured the game will be playable online for years to come, and led to tons of lapsed players, casuals and pros to say they're getting back into the game. Unfortunately, they also announced that character and balance support for the game has ended, which means that the patch that nerfed 21 is the last patch the game will ever see, potentially trapping us in the fusion meta forever. Labcoat is still strong, probably the best character in the game, but fortunately, she is now beatable. She's not a nightmare. There is a new season of pro competition coming down the pipe, and hopefully the rollback netcode means we'll be seeing a lot more people pick up the game, and maybe even find the counterplay that can slowly push lab code out of the meta. We all hate this, Woo! I hate this. Woo! My chat does not like watching it, you know? It's not that fun to watch. Labco 21 was single-handedly responsible for nearly killing the game, but thankfully, the developers listened to the fans. They took her down a peg, gave us the final update we all wanted, and maybe, just maybe, we can now bring fighters back to life. Lab Coat almost destroyed Dragon Ball Fighters, but legends never die. They just rise again. Oh my god, Tony's blocking. That was so scary right there. Spin, back oh! behind, and the 2H Wawa waits for it and gets the hit. I don't think this is, this is dead. No, that's dead, that's dead, that's dead, Tony. That is dead. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. I think maybe if you kill him, no. Wait a second. Dead, bro. Dead, bro. Dead, bro. How? Dead, bro. How? Make the full comeback. I only need one character. Wawa took a while, but the third character did the job. One nil on the French side. I just realized I have no water and my throat is f I'll be back in a second. I need to like lubricate my throat.